Tonight, we're in for a, a real treat. Well, I think it will be. And no doubt you've all come to see Dave Wilson's recollections and old film of Pennington Flash uh, in the early 70s. So, without further ado, let's welcome the maestro. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> because when I first went to the Pennington Flash bird watching uh, and we met Frank Horrocks, he was dressed like a tramp and the message he gave me was, if you don't want my dream with other people, go looking scruffy as you can. And that is what I did. And nobody comes anywhere near you. You go on peace and quiet and you have to do bird watching on your own. Perfect dress. A tramp. Even Frank even had string tied around his uh, <laughs> jacket. Now before we start the film, so that I don't, I don't forget anything at all, I do need to mention one or two things about it. They can't stop the film and rat, grab it on. But these, these are the important points of the that I worth remembering. First of all, you weren't in Cineworld. And you weren't watching David Attenborough. You're watching a film made by a very old tiny camera which didn't cover great distances. You had to get me to the subject. That was difficult. All the pictures are from Pennington between 1976 and 1985. The film, most films, wildlife films, is perfect sunshine, perfect light. Sometimes when you come on this journey with me, it's raining, it's misty, it's windy, it's bitterly cold. But that's what it's all about. And sometimes, if you want a good picture of a bird and there is no sunshine, it doesn't do the bird justice. But that's all part and parcel of the whole exercise. It's going through the seasons. We're going to start off in spring and finish up at the end of winter. And that word spring has got different connotations to different people. From the ornithological point of view, from my point of view, it kicks off in mid-February when curlews are moving from the Estuaries of the northwest of the Pennines and the calling as they go over the flash, or oyster catchers coming back in February. And it goes right through March, slowly gathering momentum with some margins of feeding and chip chaff and wheat here. April, a huge influx of migrants in May, and it fizzles out round about the first or second week of June. <coughs> the return migration starts at the end of June. So we have migration all through the year virtually. In the last few days of June, green sandpiper and common sandpiper might appear. And so the, the notion that we have a spring season and an autumn and the winter and the summer, everything overlaps. When the migrants are passing through, black wings are on edge and so on. All habitats are shown as well as I can. And, uh, the people, spend time in certain places, the birds obviously where they belong, and finally how, how does it uh, how do we go about it? How do we go about getting pictures? One method is to stalk. So if there's a subject that's bird you want to get to, you want to get close to, you've got to try and conceal yourself in a way. Sometimes you become crossing audio because you think the long you've got to get there and not be seen. So, and other times you can just walk up to certain uh, species. But the, the best method is by using a hive. And it has two hives. One a permanent one could only be put up in a safe place. And there were two of them. The upwards on the south side of the flash and what we call the Backer Village, which was the wasteland between Solico Farm Pond near the Upwoods and Sandy Lane. And then I had the, the, the best used one, and the most useful one, was the Walkie Hide. Now, this is a comical construction. It's got four poles, four side pieces, a camouflage covering. The entrance is through the back, a little flat, which is fastened with nappy pins, safety pins. And when you want to move towards the target species, 
probably begin 30 yards away or 20 yards away and end up 10 yards away. You've got to move with yourself, the hide you're holding the side pieces, a camera on a tripod, a butter box, butter box down here, binoculars here, and you're on a chair. <laughs> and only an octopus could contrive to move through, literally, it's two inches at a time. Well, that's, a, that's all I can tell you about the method, what you want to see, you don't want to listen to me, it's all about the pictures of birds. There are over 100 species on here, some are at a great distance, and if I wasn't to tell you what they were, what they were you might not know what they, what they are. But they were especially great northern dive and great plover and Slobodian great long, long way away. Martin and David Shallowcross have kindly uh, agreed to operate this thing. And uh, I'm chuffed there are so many people, I thought with COVID there'd be about half a dozen of us. But there are conservationists here, people who are preaching what I tried to preach about Pennington. Two ladies, Alison uh, South. I mean, Carrico, Wesley Waterfront, Tommy Bishop, Cutacre, and uh, Holton Park, and others, all fighting the battle to preserve and to conserve special areas.